welcome you all to the module 5 of geotechnical engineering 1 so this is the part 1 video of geotechnical engineering 1 in the fifth module it main topic covered is the consolidation process first we can see what is compressibility of soil compressibility of soil it is broadly classified into compaction and consolidation compaction it is the instantaneous process it is mainly due to the expulsion of pore air Whereas consolidation process, it is a time dependent process. There are two types of consolidation, primary and secondary consolidation. Primary consolidation is due to the expulsion of water from the voids. And secondary consolidation, it is a very slow process and it may take years to complete the process. It is due to the plastic readjustment of the soil molecules. Consolidation of soils. When a soil mass is subjected to a compressive force, its volume decreases. The compression of soil mass under a steady static pressure is called as consolidation. It mainly occurs due to the expulsion of water from the voids in a soil mass. The decrease in volume occurs due to the shifting of position of soil particles as the water escapes. Stages in consolidation. The three stages in the consolidation process are initial consolidation, primary consolidation and secondary consolidation. Now we can see the three stages. The first stage that is the initial consolidation process. The reduction in the volume of soil just after the application of load. That is when the load is applied just after a small reduction in volume occurs. That is called as initial consolidation. The decrease in volume occurs due to the expulsion of air in the voids. Now the air and the expulsion kundundavanna decrease in volume. That is called as the initial consolidation. And a very small decrease in volume may occur due to the compression of solid particles. Second one, primary consolidation. The reduction in volume occurs due to the expulsion of water from the voids. Now the water and the expulsion kundundavanna reduction in volume. So this is the most important stage in the consolidation process. The decrease in volume depends upon the permeability of soil. Now the soil and the permeability na depend on. For fine grain soils, primary consolidation occurs for a long time because the void spaces it is very small. Whereas in coarse grain soil, it occurs rather quickly because the void spaces are very large. Secondary consolidation, the reduction in volume continues at a very slow rate even after the primary consolidation is complete. This may take even years to complete the process and the main reduction in volume occurs due to the plastic readjustment of solid particles and that sub water to a new stress system. Now we can see the spring analogy for consolidation. So this is the figure for the spring analogy in case of consolidation process. So this method it is given by Tarsagi. The process of consolidation it is explained with the help of the spring analogy. The system consists of a cylinder fitted with a piston having a valve. So in this figure you can see a cylinder. It is fitted with a piston and is having a valve. The valve in the first case it is closed. And the second one is also closed. And third one it is open. The consider the initial length of the spring as 100 meter. That is this initial length of this particular spring. It is considered as 100 meter. When a load P. That is 1, kilo, 1 newton load. When it is applied to the piston with the valve closed. The entire load is taken up by water. And no load is taken up by spring. So in this figure. First case the valve is closed. In that case. The entire thing that is inside this, it is filled with water. That is the cylinder, it is filled with water. In this case, the length of the spring, it is 100 meter. And the entire um, load, it is coming, it is taken by the water present inside the particular cylinder. The load taken by the water, it is... 1 newton and the load taken by the spring it is 0. 
if the valve is gradually opened what happens the water starts escaping from the cylinder the spring starts sharing the load so once the water starts escaping from the cylinder the load it is transferred to the particular spring and hence a decrease in length of the spring occurs as more and more, more water escapes from the cylinder the load carried by the spring increases and when the load increases what happens the length of the spring may get get decreased and hence the length will be decreased to 9 in the the load causes a decrease in length to 90 meter am 90 mm when the load p is again increased to 2 newton the process of transfer of load repeats and finally the spring takes a complete load and its length becomes 80 mm likewise the process is repeated that is when the water escapes the load will be taken over by the spring and hence the length of the spring may be decreased in this case this particular spring it is considered as a soil particles in the soil mass and the other space it is taken as the water actually this particular method that is a soil particles it is taken as the spring that is when the water escapes the per, uh, escapes from the cylinder the load it is carried transferred to the spring in such a case in the actual in the field condition uh, when the water expels from the pores the particular load coming it is transferred to the soil particle so this is a spring analogy describing the consolidation process now we can see the consolidation test it is done in a machine it is called as a consolidometer the consolidation now we can see what is the procedure the consolidation ring it is cleaned and weighed first and a moistened filter and paper is filter paper is placed at the bottom of the ring and the prepare the sample ensuring that there is no air voids place the top filter paper place the ring over the bottom porous stone kept on the base plate place the top porous stone the guide ring and the top loading plate and bowl transfer the whole assembly to the loading device and fix the compression dial gauge make the loading arm horizontal connect the water reservoir line to the mold first apply a seating load of 0.05 kg per cm square keep this load until there is no change in the dial gauge reading for two consecutive hours note and record this dial gauge reading which is represented as r not take the initial dial gauge reading and apply the specified load increment without causing any shock start the stopwatch simultaneously take dial gauge reading at intervals of 0.251 to 0.254 till 1440 minutes rf that is the final reading corresponding to 1440 minutes record the last reading as rf repeat the above procedure for a number of times find the time and magnitude of the various stage of consolidation from the curves plotted with square root of elapsed time as the abscissa of and the dial gauge reading on the y axis now we can see what are the methods to find the time and magnitude of consolidation so the two methods are taylor's method also called as square root of time fitting method and casagrande method or log fitting method so we can see the first method that is the taylor's method in this method actually the two method it is for determining the uh, for determining the time and magnitude of consolidation in taylor's method first draw the curve with root t on the x axis and dial gauge reading r on the y axis extend the straight portion of the curve back and mark the z corrected zero point rc which is the, is the intersection of this extension with the dial gauge reading axis so we can see this figure in this figure first point we have to mark is the rc rc it is marked by extending the portion towards the y axis draw a straight line through the corrected 
zero and having all abscissa one point one five times larger than the previous straight line portion of the curve. Mark the point where this line cuts the previous curve, the ordinate of which corresponds to the ninety percent consolidation. That is in this case. We are first fixing the point R C with, and we are drawing a new curve. That is this curve, in which the slope of the particular curve is one point one five, and this curve is extended till it meet meet the other curve, and this point is extended towards the bottom. And this point corresponds to the ninety percent consolidation. Calculate the dial gauge reading R hundred corresponding to hundred percent primary consolidation, which can be calculated by the formula R C minus R hundred equal to ten by nine R C minus R ninety. So this is the particular graph for the Taylor's method, and now we can see the second method, Cassegrandian method or log fitting method. The two points B and C are selected corresponding to some arbitrary time t1 and 4 t1 respectively, and having vertical intercept a. So we can see this figure. In that we are fixing two points, that is t1 and 4 times t1. And the vertical intercept it is taken as a, and we are taking the same vertical in intercept a to the top, and it is extended towards the x-axis, and there we get the R C. And what uh, the point a dash is located said that the vertical intercept between b and a dash is equal to a. It represents the corrected reading R C corresponding to zero prime primary consolidation. So this point, this R C, it is the point of zero primary consolidation. The consolidation between R zero to R C is the initial compression. That is R. This point, that is between R zero and R C, it is the initial compression process. The point F corresponding to hundred percent consolidation is obtained from the intersection of two linear paths. The value of R hundred and T hundred are obtained corresponding to the point F. So this point, it is the Uh, that is the curved portion and the straight portion. It is intersected, and we get the point. This point it corresponds to R hundred, and in the x-axis it corresponds to T hundred. The point M corresponds to fifty percent consolidation, which is located midway between R C and R hundred, and the value of time T fifty is obtained. So this. Intermediate point that is T fifty it is obtained by cal. We will be getting R fifty which is an intermediate between the R C and R hundred and this is extended and we will be getting the T fifty. So R C minus R fifty equal to half into R C minus R hundred. So this is about this is the particular graph. x-axis it consists of log t and y-axis dial gauge reading so this is about the all about the video of part 1